All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back. Today we are talking about probably one of the last aspects, at least in this series, of Linux networking. And where we're going to move to is layer three, and that, of course, has to do with IP packets. So we talked previously about bridging and things like that, but that's pretty much at layer two, and we were concerned with you know, MAC addresses and things like that as far as our forwarding goes. But now we're going to move to uh, routing. And I'm going to make a distinction between two things. One is host-based routing and the decisions that a host makes and the forwarding of IP packets across a host. So the host that you see in this particular graphic that's that's above me here is a uh, you know 192.168.1.1, 1 2.1 and 3.1. Those are all hosts. And today we're going to work towards you know behaving more like the router in the middle, which is you know 1.254, 2.254 and 3.254. And all of those IP addresses, all those interfaces exist on the same same node or host. And of course, what we're really talking about is turning an Ubuntu virtual machine into a router. All right, let's take a moment to recap some of the things that we've talked about. So far, we've actually talked about several aspects of Linux networking. You know, we were introduced to the idea of YAML-based files, right? So we talked a little bit about different configuration file types and some of the markup languages and uh, ubuntu networking uses the yaml syntax and then we run netplan to apply whatever we put in our yaml configuration file so initially we start off with a straight up host config right there's not much to it it's just telling the interface that you're going to get everything via dhcp and normally, the dynamic host configuration protocol gives us our IP address, our gateway, mask, name server, and then whatever else we're going to give out, whatever other servers we might have, like VoIP servers or file servers. There's a tremendous number of options associated with DHCP. Well, if we decide that we don't want to do DHCP, well, we've got to do static IP addressing, and that means that we've got to figure out a way to put DNS and gateways and masks and everything else into our configuration file. And that was sort of our, our second build. And I'll make a, a distinction here also between what you would do for the host, right? Your IP address, your mask, and your gateway, because those exist in our YAML config file. Usually things like name servers are going to uh, be in the resolve.config file. Now we have to remember that there's a little change to how resolve.config works. Historically, we might have edited that file, but now it's a link to another file or linked to that file. And we might run something like systemd-resolve to actually manage that. So we'll just put that aside for right now. That's a part of the whole DNS discussion, but we just have to remember that if we're gonna do manual configs in our hosts. We also talked about some tools, right? We have IP, and it turns out that we're going to go back to IP here in uh, later on in this video. But then we've got LShow and then ETH tool. These are some of the things that we can use along the way to see what's going on. But really, our big one was IP. And in the last video, we did bridged interfaces and bridge group. And what we found out was that we could actually take two or more interfaces on a particular host and glue them together in a bridge group and so they're they have the same layer two connectivity they can occupy the same ip address space not the same ip address but the same ip address space and we can just treat them as sort of a pass-through interface now the thing that all of that stuff shares is that we're really talking about you know ways to configure a host and the ways that a host might behave it's not really getting to where we want to which is turning into a network device. Now we could, we could take those bridged interfaces and turn a node into an actual switch or bridge on the network. We could absolutely do that. And maybe we will when we start to get to some bigger topologies, but we might actually use that more for like a development environment, load balancing, VM access to the network, things of that sort. Now, when we start to talk about routing, there's really, several processes that we're worried about here. 
every single node on a network, if you have an IP address, you have a host routing table. And there are a collection of destinations that we need to have an entry for in order to get to them. So we want to be able to reach all the folks that are on and off my network. But there are also a whole collection of, of other destinations that don't have anything to do with whether or not it's on my network or not. So we have multicast addresses, we have broadcast addresses, and then we also have the whole other set of IPv6 destinations. And then, of course, what do we do about our default gateway? So you can actually manipulate your routing table quite a bit. Now, by default, if you just get an IP address via DHCP, a host automatically builds a routing table to get to most of these destinations. You don't actually have to touch. In fact, you might go your entire life without ever looking at a host routing table until you decide you want to work with networking. So that's the host-based routing table. The minute we say we're going to do router routing, well, we have to understand that routers have IP addresses just like hosts, but they also have router routing tables, which are a little bit different than host routing tables. We're concerned with getting to a collection of destination networks and picking the proper interface to do that. And then we can take the next step and we can say, well, let's turn on static routing or configure static routing, or maybe even do a routing protocol, dynamic routing like OSPF or EIGRP or something of that sort. Now here is an example of a host routing table from a Windows node. Now you obtain this by running the route print command in a command window. And the top line here, the all zeros entry, that is our default gateway. And then we've got loopbacks and things like that. And then we've got the network upon which a node is residing. And then we've got multicast and broadcast. Now even on this network here, there are actually three addresses that are associated with my network. My IP address, my network itself, and then the broadcast address on my network. Now, I don't want to turn this into a host routing video. We've got other videos for that. I'll link to those in the show notes, but there we have it. Now, that's an IPv4 routing table. What about IPv6? Today, if you do NSLOOKUP or TRACEROUTE or something like that, you might run across IPv6 addresses, and they look sort of like this down here. So, well, not sort of, those are IPv6 addresses, but your host has an IPv6 routing table, so you need to be able to get to those destinations too. So today, it's very common to see a host with both. So that's Windows, but that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about Linux. So here is an example of the host routing table from Ubuntu. Now, Linux is a little bit different from the Windows that it doesn't dump the entire routing table uh, without a little bit of help. But this is the default that you would see if you run the simple IP route command. So there is our friend IP again, and route is just an argument to the IP command. Now these are built-in tools, so we could also install some other tools that are popular or might fit the way that you like doing things. And so netstat and route are two other ways to get them. But of course, they're not installed by default. And you can see that if we run them, right, it says, hey, this is how you get there, right? You would install net tools for both of them. Now, netstat is actually very powerful because it's not just about routing. It's about connections and everything else. Now, what does this tell us? Well, if you take a look at the output from the IP route command, we can see one that we've got a default route. And we can certainly see that or recall that we did that in our YAML file. And then we've got the two interfaces there. Now, this is still the bridge group interfaces, so we have a couple of them. But the really important detail here is that the node knows that it's on the 10.0.2.0 network and so knows how to process those entries, knows what its default gateway is, and then there's the behavior for, for special addresses. Okay, but this is still the host routing table. What if we wanted to get to that point where the node was actually behaving as a router? Well, we have to turn on IP forwarding, and what this is going to do is going to say, well, I want you to take 
packets from this interface and forward them to a different interface or send them out a different interface based on the network destination. And the key difference here is that in the case of bridging, there are the two interfaces, in this case, the graphic here would show two interfaces connected to my Ubuntu VM. Those would be on the same IP address, right? It was 10.02.98.99. In this case, they're on two different networks, so a different IP address space. So the fundamental difference here is whether they're sharing the same IP address space or different IP address space. And you can see that there are two different sets of commands, depending on whether we're talking about just IPv4 or IPv6. Now these exist in the syscontrol.conf file. We'll take a quick look at that here in a second. Now you can make those changes, but then we need to reread the file and maybe restart the, uh, the service. And let's not forget that we have man pages for all of this stuff. Now we're getting a little long on the video, so we'll do the actual demo of the build next time because we're actually going to spin up a couple of VMs and route between them through a router that's on a host-only network. But for right now, let's take a look at some of the configuration options we might use. So here we are on our Linux VM, right? Let's first take a look at our netplan config file. So we're going to do... Just move over there and we'll do a, a more on you know the 99 config one so this is the one that we were using you know this is one we've been using all along and so when we do the output of route itself or the route as an argument to ip this is really where it's pulling stuff from but it's it's not pulling from this file we configured things from this file and the information is here. So we saw the default gateway is 10.0.2.2 and then we saw these two IP addresses. So if I do a man on the IP config, we can see way up here, right at the top, right? We have the object and in one case, the object is route. And so that's what we're gonna do here. So we'll do that real quick. So we'll do the IP route, and this is the output of the command that's in the in the slide. So this is on a live VM. Now, if I wanted to do netstat, oops, netstat dash r or rn, uh, we can see that it's not installed. If I wanted to do route, right, they're both available via the the net tools. Okay. Now, where would I find the IP forwarding stuff? Well, that is in, we'll back up just one layer. And remember that in a, a Linux system, most of the stuff is in slash etc, at least most of the configuration stuff, I should say. Okay, so now we'll do a more on the syscontrol config file. And if we take a look here, right, it's not, at this point, it's not a terribly long configuration. And what we're looking for is this stuff right at the top, right? We can see that we've got net IPv4 config default, and then we've got the RP filters and things like that. And then we've got forwarding, right? Uncomment the next lot line to enable IP packet forwarding. And then we would run the dash P option. Well, what's that all about? Well, again, if we take a look at the man pages for syscontrol, or syskettle, as I've heard some people say, we can see there's a dash P down here and then it's a file. And so what we do is we have syscontrol and then dash P says, well, what do you want to act on? So syscontrol is the thing that addresses the entire system. And when we use dash P, it directs it to look at a particular file. So there we go. That's kind of what we're going to work with uh, next time around as we do our demo. Well, there we go, folks. So this has been uh, getting started and routing in Ubuntu Linux. And so routing is really all about figuring out your pathway. How are you going to get there? So we remember that all nodes have an IP address. And because they have an IP address, they automatically get a routing table. So the minute you give anything an IP address, even if you just say, well, I'm going to give a switch, an IP address so that I can manage it, it's got to now figure out forwarding at layer three. Not forwarding between interfaces, but it's got to understand 
its own network and how to get to destinations. That's sort of our starting point for routing. But then when we move to routers, there is a special purpose node that forwards things between interfaces and networks based on IP destinations and not just because they're a member of a network. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if you're becoming Layer 3 enabled. And as we move things from Layer 2 to Layer 3, may those packets always reach their destination.